All right, it is ancient author time. I'm pretty stoked about this because we left last week off with me thinking I should be able to one shot hard this week. All right, I, I see the green screen issue, okay? I just want you to know I see it and I notice it very late in the video, unfortunately. And I just can't bring myself to re-record a 40 plus minute video over it. So if that's too annoying for you to deal with, I understand. Uh, I'll see you next time, but I think it's not detrimental to what's going on in the video. So I'm just going to leave it there and deal with it. I, what happens is I, I usually have my camera over further, so that's not in the frame. And then I, when I pulled my camera over in the middle, I didn't crop and I didn't crop it off. I didn't remember to crop the end off. So uh, again, my apologies. I know that's kind of annoying, but I don't think it really takes away from the video. So we're going to go ahead and leave it because I just can't re-record this 40 minute plus video. So that's it. Again, if you, if you can't deal with it, <laughs> no hard feelings. I'll see you next time. But uh, let's go ahead and get back to, to the video. So, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. If we can one shot hard, we'll probably move up the hill and start trying to make some progress there. I, I hear it's quite a different world up there. So uh, let's jump in here real quick. What we'll do is I'll, I'll go through and set my teams up. We'll try it. And then afterwards, we'll go through and I'll, I'll show you how every champ is geared and kind of break down all the champs that were in the teams. So it might be a little bit of a longer video, but I'll, I'll do that in the second half of it. So if you don't want to hang around for that, you, it's not mixed in or anything. Now, this one's interesting. This one's an interesting one because it is tough. This is a tough one. He does a lot of damage. So one thing I think I'm gonna do for this one is I want to give Orn a shot. I want to see how Orn does. So I've thrown some gear on him. We're gonna put him in the mix. And, um, and see how he performs. I do love Omar. I'm kind of wondering if maybe I want to go Nagrama instead of Omar, though. Just because Nagrama is, is going to be putting in some, some good damage for us. And we've got, a, we've got a decent amount of AoE at this point. Ravenna can pretty much handle the AoE. I think Nagrama is going to output more damage for us than, uh, than Omar. And then for the positioning of everyone, I, I want her to get the attack bonus from him, but I don't think I want her to be backline. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull him up front. And then he should, because I'm certain she's got higher attack. I mean, I guess she'll run up. I guess I could do like that just to ensure, and then we could, we could let him run like that, I think, maybe. And then for the commander, I think it's got to be Rhoda, right? Yeah. So we've got Omar plus two ultimate. We've got Leo and Hercules. We've got Nagrama there. Did I have any other Rhodas down here that I was thinking about rolling? No, I think these were all... No. So I guess we'll, we'll go with the one that gives Nagrama the bump. No one else is really getting a bump. Omar would, but again, I, I, I think this is going to be a little bit more optimal for us. We've got Power Word Pain for the AoE thing. Ancestral Will. You know what I might do is jump out actually and, and level up some of these that I'm going to be using. Let's see if there's another one I like better. Actually, yeah, none of these are going to be doing us any good because we're not running a tank in this comp. So let's just do the one that gives us the better stat bump. And then here... Do I, yeah, I reckon, I reckon he's going to need Coronate for this one. So I think, I think that'll be the team we run for round one. Round two, I think we might leave the same because they performed pretty well, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, and everyone's gotten stronger. Randall has a couple more evolutions now. Senway's, I think, also gotten a few more evolutions. Muka is significantly stronger than he was. Um, and I'm running Muka on a gluttony set. Again, we'll talk about the gear in depth after the run. But I think I don't think much needs changing here. If I'm remembering correctly, this team performed pretty well, and it's only gotten stronger. Muka's only significantly stronger now. Everyone else has gotten a little bit of a bump, except maybe Skewer and Hattie. So I think we're probably squared away here. There's not much that I think I wanted to do differently here. Let me just make sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we were good to go here. So we're gonna leave that one, and then Team Three. Actually, maybe I got a new commander for him. Screw and Hattie and Randall. 
Yeah, it was. Yeah, Mooka and Randall could be a good one, huh? And Randall could be a good one versus. Oh no no no! That is it. That's the one I'm running. No, we're, we're good then. Yeah, this is fine. I'd rather. I think I'd. Even though Mook is stronger, I think the ultimate bump for Skewer and Hattie will bring Skewer closer to everyone else's level. So, actually, no, we're we're good there. And then Team Three. <sighs> this one was tough too. My my thoughts on this one because I think I want to get Bailey in the mix. I'm just trying to decide who I want to drop. Botmark is bringing a nice, some nice mechanics. Artist is bringing some nice mechanics. Taylor's going to do some crazy damage. I think the only, the only logical drop here is Sorietta. My, my concern is that Sorietta is like immortal two or three at this point. But I do want to get Bailey in the mix. I just don't, I'm, I, I guess I'm a little concerned about him dying. But I do want to try it. I'm wondering if maybe the, the extra damage we're going to get from Bailey, like, will speed it up a little bit and it maybe won't matter quite as much. And then, as far as Commander, I think we're probably going to go with this one. And I did say I was going to go level up the prototypes, but actually I'm not because I think if I back out, it's going to undo all the changes I just made. And I don't want to do them again, so we're just going to roll with it the way it is and hope they can do it. I think I'm pretty confident here, though. And I've moved myself so you guys can see what I'm doing there. Hopefully that's uh, that's good enough. All right. All right. Let's, um, let's jump in. Let's jump in and try it. Let's jump in and try it. See how it goes. And I do want to see how Orin is going to do for us. Probably should have pulled Orin back. Is this the one where mid lane takes some pretty heavy damage? No, because I wanted the, the attack boost for two of them. I probably could have rearranged it a little bit differently, but whatever. Yeah, Orn's taking some big hits. Hopefully, oh, we're doing some real heavy damage, though. I don't think it's going to matter if Orn does die, even. Yeah, he's getting melted, dude. Orn did all right. All right, so one boss down kind of easily. If we can drop this boss and get rid of that shield, I think we're we're in the clear for the third round. It's just we just got to drop this boss. And I think the issue last time was damage. I think our damage output wasn't fast enough. So let's see if we can remedy that. Muka in here putting in work, dude. Good. We're melting that shield. Yeah, I think we're good. We'll get one or two more shields, but it won't matter. That damage output is just wild. Sinway and Muka, like neck and neck, dude. Sinway does have a few more <clears throat> a few more evolutions on him, but I think the gluttony set is probably what's helping Muka close that gap. That's the first gluttony set I've equipped on anyone in my account, actually. If you would have told me Muka would have gotten the first gluttony set I used earlier on, I'd have been like, nah, probably not. All right, easy work, dude. That's an, that's easy work right there. So we should be fine in the last round, then. I think even if Bailey does get dropped, we, I mean, we, we, we were close. We had 10 seconds left. We got it done. So, yeah, without the shield, this should not be a problem. Even if Bailey gets dropped, I think. I guess we'll see.
I'm pretty interested to see the damage results here. Like how, how does Bailey keep up with Taylor? Considering Taylor is immortal with three crystals and Bailey is barely legendary. I feel like we're super safe. This, this should be good. We should be good here. Yeah, I think this is it. I don't think he's got much of a chance. Bailey's keeping up. It would be interesting to see, to do it again and see with the same comp and see how Sorietta does compared to Bailey. Because Sorietta's got like 51,000 attack. And Bailey has like 30. 4,000, I think. So there's a substantial difference, but I feel like Bailey is just so much better equipped to output damage based on his, you know what I mean? Like, obviously. It would be interesting to see the comparison. I could go look at the last video, but Torietta's gotten a little, little bit of progress since then, so. All right, so we've got a minute left to do, what, two and a half? health bars, and at that rate, we're going to be fine. I mean, like, we, we were never... This was a lot easier than I thought. I thought we would one-shot it, but I thought we would kind of, like, it would be close. We, we, um, we just ran right through that. That was... It was not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. I'm, I'm interested to see what hell is like. So we'll, we'll do a run in hell real quick, just because I'm curious. And I, I reckon some of y'all might be too. And then uh, then we'll go and do the, the, the breakdown of everyone that I that I used. All right, we'll go here, hell. And we'll just run the same teams. 1.8 million, 1.8 million. All right. We're not as outgunned, at least based on team power, as I expected us to be. Let's see how this goes. <sighs> Orn holds on with one HP. You gotta, you gotta fill his health back up. You gotta get him full if he's gonna take that hit again. I mean, literally, dude. Wow. Fill his health up. You gotta fill it all the way up. Heal him up. Yeah, he's. we literally have to get him to full health for him to survive that. That's good. All right, so we lost Orn. The good news is we didn't lose anyone that's putting out a crazy amount of damage or anything. So we either have to get better gear on Orn, or we just use someone else. We, we think about someone else we can use in here. I'll be honest though, that we're doing better in here than I thought we would too. I thought this was gonna be a real quick <clears throat> jump in and get melted kind of situation, but we've, we've got a chance of taking this boss down. Couple of adjustments to the comp. Man, real close to getting that. Uh, yeah, we're a uh, couple of adjustments to the comp and keep the team, keep the whole team alive. That could be decent. And here, if it's like the other difficulties, this one's not so much dangerous as much as it is just difficult to output the amount of damage that you need to output to like stay on top of it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really expect us to get wiped here, but I would, I would expect us to just struggle to output the damage. So we'll see how it goes.
Is that... My Randall has low health, which I find interesting. Yeah, I'm a little confused about that because he's built specifically to be tanky. That's strange. I mean, whoever he targets next is probably going to go down quick then because they're not going to be nearly as tanky as he was. It looks like it's Mooka. Mooka's got pretty good sustain, though, when he jumps into that... that um, when he uses his ult, he gets lifesteal. So that on top of the healing Lyran's bringing, it might be okay that he's getting targeted. Especially as I improve him. So yeah, here it's just a matter of damage output. So let's see how the final boss goes. That's a decent pace. It would be, it, it's just, it's just such a different world in here if you could take away those two skills from him. The shield is, like, we have to figure out the shield stage if we're gonna have, some, well, I don't know, we took it down pretty quick. Still though, that, that that pause on damage that we're putting out is gonna add up. The damage isn't isn't overwhelming in here so far. But yeah, see the frequency too, even if we get it down quick, the frequency of the shield is just like such a problem. Maybe it's not lasting as long because we took some levels off of it. Yeah, it's just a duration thing. If the damage isn't overwhelming, it's really just going to be a matter of getting the, the... Mostly the shield skill out of the equation. We can get that removed and just keep damage steadily going into him. I think we'll be okay. I mean, obviously taking away the skill from the first round too would be make the run that much safer, but I kind of think the main priority is the shield, which is a tough stage. I mean, you got to have a lot of damage output in there. Uh-oh. He's ramping up a little bit. It, it, it would seem. So it looks like we're gonna get one health bar out of him, which is not, not too shabby. We lost our front line though, so it's probably about to get get ugly for us. Okay. So the, yeah, the big takeaway here. I mean, and and it's it's obvious. Like yeah, we need to kill the first two bosses, but I I think the shield is the priority just to keep damage steadily going into him. And then if he ramps up and he can ult and get us out of there, fine. But if, if, if we weren't getting our damage interrupted every six seconds, we'd have done so much more. So we'll work on that. We'll see how we can't make our, our team two stronger for next week. Um, but even so, that's not bad. I think that's pretty good. One shot and hard is pretty nice. It might be worth it. Eh, no. I was gonna say I might jump back down and one shot normal, but not even, getting, not even getting legendary gear from normal. So we might just one shot hard and then put the rest of our tickets into hill and start working on that. All right, so that's it for the actual gameplay portion of the video. So if you want to bounce, um, then I'll see you later. Otherwise, we're going to do a, a bit of a deep dive into like how everybody's built and stuff. So let's do it like this. Let me bring this up. And we'll go well no so that's team one i'm making a little mini screenshot of the team so i know who to go over first 
All right, so in the front, we've got Crete. He is at 1.9 million HP. He's just at base level immortal. Equipment, it's just HP across the board. Again, if I ever get the drops, I will move him over to an HP set here. He just on an accuracy set because that's coincidentally how it worked out. And this one had a good uh, damage reduction sub. But I'll eventually get him over to all HP sets. I just don't have, they, they just will not drop. Let's check and see if they have dropped actually. Maybe they have in the last few runs I've, I've snuck in lately. No, it's just not happening. So anyway, but that's it. Just all HP sets, HP across the board. Uh, I went damage reduction on the boots. If you want to lean more into arena, you can go crit damage reduction here. But uh, I think HP, HP damage reduction has worked out really well for me. So that's what I recommend. His exclusive is at 20. I'll get it to 30. It's just... I don't know that he's going to be the next one I get to 30. So anyway, that's it. And if, uh, just assume everyone's talent tree is done. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to bring up everybody's talent tree on every single one, but just assume everyone's talent tree is done as far as I can get it done. Um, so that's it. Just stack HP, damage reduction on the boots. That's really all you need to do with him. He's a ridiculous champ. Masrani, kind of the same principle, except just go HP across the board. Just all things HP for him. I've got him at uh, 1.8 million HP. And again, that's really all you need to worry about. His exclusive, I also have at 20. He's another one that I will take to 30, 100%. He's just probably not gonna be the next one I take to 30. Um, but that's it, all HP. Everywhere you can get HP on Maserani, just put HP on him. Next is Orn, who, where is he? Right here who I don't know if, if he's quite earned a spot in the team yet. We might try something else next time, but I just went with attack stats for him across the board. Again, I keep getting good filler Hawkeye sets, but I didn't put it on him on purpose. I think he pretty much just needs attack across the board because a lot of what he does is like, he launches missiles that do damage to an area he, he leaves mines around that do damage based on attack. So I'm not I'm not even sure how much he's really going to benefit from crit stats because a lot of what he's doing is sending out things that are then doing area damage. So I don't know if that crits, you know what I mean? And I don't think it recommends crit stats for him in, in the actual recommended. I think it always just recommends uh, attack stats and attack sets. So I just went pure attack on him. I do think there's some potential here for sure. He, he's obviously not getting the best gear that I have to give him. So maybe maybe when we actually do want to fully test him, we'll really load him up on some of my better pieces that have good attack sub rolls and stuff. I also didn't do anything with his exclusive yet. So it isn't like I've super invested super heavily in him. I do see some potential in him though. So we'll, uh, we'll continue to play around with him and see how it is. But in the same way that you're kind of going HP sets, all HP on, on Crete or Masrani, you're going all attack sets, all attack on this guy. That's what I think anyway. If you if you have him and you use him and you put crit stats on him and he does well, let me know. But as far as I know, he just needs attack. Nagrama is at Immortal 3. We got a, a little bit of a crit style build on him. We went crit rate, attack, attack. And um, got an overload set in the mix to bump his crit damage up a little bit. Just kind of a more, a more traditional damage dealer style where he needs attack and crit stats. Uh, Nagrama's really fun. I really like Nagrama. I do think ultimately he's probably better used manually. I think if you aim him, because it, it, it's he's kind of focused, even though he's kind of listed as an AOE champ. It's a little bit more focused than, than a general a AOE champ. So if you can aim him, that's ultimately better. But you see, I didn't do it and he still did fine. Uh, as far as exclusive, I've got him to 10. And I would consider taking him to 20. At some point i don't know that he's again he's not like the next one i'm gonna i'm gonna take to 20 i don't think but i would probably take him to 20 at least i think he's i think he's a pretty cool champ so just like traditional attack crit rate crit damage sets get some crit stats on him if you can he's he's dope he's a dope champ and then of course my still my favorite no one no one's been able to take her spot yet i'm all about some ravenna she's at immortal with two crystals um, I've got double overload set and crit rate set on her and she's, she regularly gets my best gear, my best gear in these sets. If I get better pieces, I swap them out for her. 
And uh, we've still got a lot of improvements that can be made. But again, again, kind of in the same way I talked about Nagrama, just standard damage dealer with crit stats. I feel like crit stats are probably a good way to go on her too because I, do get, I get a lot of comments from people who say that their Ravenna is near the same evolution as mine, higher level. Um, a lot of things are very similar, but they'll be like, my Ravenna has 74,000 attack. Why does yours have such a higher power level? I'm thinking that maybe the crit stats are the answer there. I think maybe crit stats translate to more power on her than attack does. That's the only thing I can think about why my power level would be higher than yours if you have a much higher attack on your Ravenna. Um, and then her exclusive is max. She's the first champ that I've maxed out an exclusive on. So um, again, traditional damage dealer style with the crit stats and maybe a bigger focus on crit stats because that seems to translate to a higher power level if you care about the power level. Um, that's, that's how I've done it. All right. So that's that team. And then I guess we can look at the prototypes too that we use there. I used Power Word Pain, which I'm a big fan of when an allied energy or hunter hero hits three or more enemies at the same time. They gain an additional 30% damage dealt by their energy skill until the end of the battle. And it stacks up to three times. So when there are multiple champs, when there are three or more champs for them to hit regularly, this can very quickly stack up to 90% damage dealt by their ener energy skill for the rest of the battle. It's like a permanent increase for the rest of the battle. It's really, really good. It's a really good prototype. Uh, one of my favorites, for sure. I'll probably do a video soon going through my favorite prototypes. Here, I'm using Astral Strike for every two normal attacks that were launched by an allied reassemble hero. Again, that's just a tank one. I do think it's a really good one, but I'm not running a tank on that team. So I just slotted that one in for the stat bonus. But if you're running tanks, I think there's a lot of potential in this prototype. I do think it's really interesting. And then the last one is Coronate, which surely you've heard me talk about by now. But it really, it just increases the healing of your healers substantially. It's a, it's just a, basically a big boost for your healers. It makes it a lot easier. And since Masrani, until you get him to exclusive 30, he's a, in no way am I trying to shit on his healing. But if you compare him to someone like Serena, he, he doesn't really hang with Serena in the healing department exclusively until you get him to exclusive 30, perhaps. So Coronate, the reason I go with Coronate for him over, um, I think, Flashpoint, because Flashpoint has a lot of synergy with him with the shields and stuff, or, or uh, pain, power, uh, pain Rune as well, has a lot of synergy with him with the shield stuff. I want to help his healing out because Serena offers more stability as far as how well she can heal everyone back up. So Coronate helps my Maserani manage that a little bit better, okay? That's why I run it with him there. Let's get my screen cap for Team 2 real quick, and we'll go talk about them. All right. We've got so many screens to go through to get back. My Randall. I've been playing around with a few different things with Randall. I have swapped him over to an HP build. I think I'm going to swap him back to defense. He's, um, I, I think he's going to do better. He's better bait with defense, right? And I like the 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 pain rune synergy because I use him a lot in arena. There's a lot of cool things you can do with Randall when you build him tanky, and that's kind of what I've leaned into. I did. I swapped him over because I wanted to see how he would do with HP. And um, I, th I just think I can use him more specifically and more effectively if I go back to defense. So that's probably going to happen soon. Um, but he is, of course, an assassin. So if you want to build him damage, obviously do that too. And I, I, I reckon it's it's going to be along the lines of what I said about Ravenna and Nagrama. Kind of a traditional damage dealer with crit stats. Uh, if you want to go the route I've, go I've gone... I've gone HP, HP damage reduction. I'm probably going to switch these back to defense, though. So I'll go defense, defense, damage reduction. I might go defense, crit damage reduction, defense, and see if he does a little bit better for me in arena. The problem is these boots are really, really good. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Maybe maybe he will get to keep these boots. Um, but anyway, that's it. His exclusive is at 10 because, again, he's not getting much out of his exclusive. It's not at 10. I'm sorry. It's just unlocked. I'm not getting much out of his ex ex exclusive, it's a hard word, 
um, because I'm not using him as a damage dealer, so I, I haven't bothered much with it. Um, but that's it. That's how I'm using him. Again, if you wanted to build him for some damage, you could. Also, too, I'll say about Team 2, I'm still not entirely sure he counts as a summoner. I don't know if his shadow counts as a summon or not. And I don't, I don't really know how to even confirm that, to be honest. But I, for, for some reason, I feel like he might not be a summoner. So, I don't know. You can... If you have any insight on that and want to share it, I'd be interested. Uh, let's see, we've got Mooka, who we talked about. Mooka is on my first gluttony set I've ever equipped. And he's not crazy stats or anything. He's, he's got a, I've got to get another evolution in him, get him to Immortal. Uh, his exclusive, I did go ahead and take the 10. Also, too, I, re I may have said 20 when someone's was at 10. Sometimes I look at this and the way it translates down here feels different. <laughs> so if I've, if I've said that wrong at any point in the video, uh, you were uh, you were able to see what their level was actually at um, But anyway, I went ahead and took him to 10 and I think 20 is gonna be good, too. I just Since these are semi limited. I'm not entirely sure. I want him to be the next one I take to 20, but I probably will take him to 20 uh, And then I think 30 if you want to invest in Mooka, I think this is killer. I think this is really really cool so um, I think he's worth a 30 later he's not someone i would like prioritize but i do think it's a cool level 30 so that's it i put him in a gluttony set you could also just put him in, a, in an attack set and if i'm not mistaken um he he's interesting the game recommends hero sets and attack kind of exclusively but where is it the wolf inherits his attack, defense, and health, and health, and then 100% of his crit rate, damage reduction, and damage bonus. Uh, so they do inherit his crit rate. So there's there's a, there's a conversation to be had about putting crit rate on him. Um, but, and, and, and I did. <laughs> and it seemed to work out pretty well. But the game only recommends attack for some reason. So, you know, do with that what you will. But anyway, that's Mooka. Sinway, I've talked about pretty extensively at this point. We, we know I'm a big old fan of Sinway, but Mooka did well. Mooka hung with him pretty good, huh? Uh, I have to optimize his gear a little bit, but just attack. He, he is a, an example of someone you just go full attack across the board. I have his exclusive. Um, oh, yeah. Now I have his exclusive at 20. I forgot he was the next one I was doing. Well, damn, that would have been interesting to see. That'll be interesting to see the next run if that has any sort of impact. Forgot to come in and do that when I got more gold ones. But uh, anyway, now, yeah, now his exclusive is 20. And then he's on, again, pure attack, attack across the board. Awesome champ. Liren, I think we all know Liren at this point. Uh, I have him on an abundance set, which actually, can I make some improvements to that now? I've gotten a decent amount more gear. Still no, huh? Can we make some changes then? Do I get HP gloves here? Nope. Well, either way. Eventually, I'll get him in all legendary, but I've got him in an abundant set. It's working out pretty good for me. Exclusive is just unlocked. I could probably justify taking him to 10. I might take him to 10 soon. Uh, Liren's... We, we, we love Liren around here. Oh, and then the uh, prototypes and stuff. We are using Praying Eyes. When they inflict a crit with their basic attack, increases their attack by 36% for 6 seconds. I feel like that's just a pretty beefy bump. And, um... I could probably swap that out on that team, actually. Mooka's the only one I really went with crit. I think I initially put that one there again just for the stat bonus, because it was leveled up. We could probably come up with, uh... a better version of that, though. It does help... Yeah, it's, it's only Vanguards, too. I guess I, that one was probably there just because of the stat bonus. I might have a better option for that one now. Some of these I need to come in here and, and level up a little bit. Energy or Hunter Hero. Do any of these do anything for summoners? Yeah, that'll be interesting to come in here and dig around and, like, optimize that a little bit. I'm pretty sure that was just there for the stat bonus, though. And then what do we got here? Company of Heroes. Again, another one for tanks. Wasn't really doing much for us. It was just there for the stat bonus. And then Scholar's Monument. Again, I think it was really just there for the stat bonus. When an allied hero sustains crit damage from the enemy, all heroes should recover 3% of their max HP. I don't think that these enemies are 
landing crit hits. I don't think anyone in the PvE environment lands critical hits. So again, just there for the stat bump. Maybe, maybe we'll spend this week digging around our prototypes a little bit and optimizing a little bit better and trying to get the things that do actually apply to our teams beyond just the stat bonus we're getting, if that makes sense. But for now, the stat bonuses seem to be enough. All right, so let's go over team three real quickly and get on out of here. All right, so we've got artists who uh, I will continue to use and defend <laughs> aggressively. Still a big fan of artists. We've gone HP, HP, damage reduction, and I still haven't really fully optimized Artis's gear. And I don't use Artis in every stage anymore of like the, the storyline. I'm in 40, chapter 40. However, I have had to swap him in a couple times into the front line to give my front line more sustain. And that has gotten me through a couple of walls. So Artis is still contributing there. I do still use him in dungeons, and I'm obviously still using him in altar. So he's definitely get, still getting a lot of mileage. So the account has not outgrown him yet so we know i'm a big fan but hp 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 damage reduction kind of the same way i talked about building crete i'm not bothering with his exclusive beyond 10 I, I, I would i would go back and probably not even do it to 10 honestly because i'm not using him for damage uh, that that is one thing I, I would like i wish i wish you had to use tanks because it would be kind of fun i think to use vanguards for what they're actually intended to be used for which is defensive damage dealing um but it just seems like the vanguards are so much better equipped to tank for you <laughs> than the tanks are <laughs> and they contribute they, they they bring interesting enough mechanics so i almost kind of wish this would somehow get changed in a way where t where tanks needed to be used more specifically more often but it is what it is Anyway, we, we, we all know how I've built artists. Taylor's another one I've talked about in depth. Crit. Get your crit rate high on Taylor. Before you focus anything else, he needs to have high crit rate. Get your crit rate and then start worrying about getting attack and crit damage, okay? Get his crit high. The more he crits, the better off he's going to do. He's going to take care of his own crit damage the more he crits. He's, it's very important for Taylor to land crit hits. I have his exclusive at 10. I would probably take it to 20. I might take it to 20 sometime soon, actually, but that's it. All crit sets, crit rate, attack, attack across the board, unless you've got monstrous substat rolls and, and can go crit damage here and still keep his crit rate above, like, 80. We want to get that crit rate high on Taylor, though, okay? Bailey. Um, still working on my Bailey, but we've got double crit rate uh, with crit damage set. I've got crit damage on the gloves. He's got a ways to go. I've got some improvements to make for sure, but he's coming along. I went ahead and took his exclusive to 10 as well. He might be the next one I take to 20. He might be the next one I take to 20 because I do want to get him to 30 sometime soon, but I got to get a couple more orbs to get him brought up. But again, I think I think standard damage dealer stuff with crit stats for him, all right? Serena, all HP, all day long. We all know. Uh, she is in contention for being the next one that I take to EX30 because that's just crazy that is she has such a good exclusive 30 it's so good so she is very likely going to be the next one I take to 30 well worth being your first EX30 to be honest I did Ravenna because I'm hard headed and I wanted to do Ravenna but uh, Serena is a fantastic candidate for EX30 and again, all HP sets, HP across the bottom. You'll be squared away. Bot Mark II, I recently swapped over to attack. I was running him in, with, with HP in, in these two spots for a while because I was having trouble keeping him alive in Disa, but we've progressed to the point where I can keep him alive comfortably and switch him over to attack, which speeds my run up a little bit. So Bot Mark, you can get away with running HP here though because Bot Mark's big appeal here is, uh, where where is it, which skill is it? This one, when spider artillery lands a critical strike, it has a 60% chance to decrease the enemy's defense by 4% for six seconds. This effect can stack up to eight times, reducing the target's defense by up to 32%. So when when he's doing this one, the, the multiple hits in a row, in a row, in a row, the more that he's critting, the more of a chance he has to drop the enemy's defense in a, in a way that stacks. It adds up really quickly. It's really, really nice for, for enemies with a lot of health. Um, 
So it really doesn't matter if his attack is high because he's really just opening up the door for your other damage dealers to do much more damage. So you can go HP for a while while you need to. And then as, as you're able to a little bit more comfortably swap him over to attack. Uh, but and, and again, get the crit rate up. One thing that happened to me when I switched him over to attack is I lost some good crit rate subs. I had him at like 106% crit rate. If you can get him to 100, that's the dream. You're living the dream, right? Um, but he dropped down to about 90 with the attack gear, so I can live with him being at 90 for now. But yeah, I mean, I would I would say arguably more important than getting crit rate on Taylor, it's important getting crit rate on Bot Mark because if especially if you're going the HP build, because if you're going the HP build, that is 100% the reason that you have Bot Mark in the fight is for that passive. So if you've if you're going HP and you've only got him at like 60% crit rate, if that's all you can do, that's all you can do. But you really want to focus getting that crit rate higher on bot mark, right? And then exclusive, I haven't done anything but unlocked it because actually I, I might take him to 10 now, now that I'm now that I've switched him over to attack. But we'll see. We're using Pain Rune because we're using Godier, and uh this just complements Assassins and Vanguard so well, right? They lose a shield, the shield explodes, inflicting damage. Uh, based on the shield and then a stun. Obviously, we can't stun the boss in altar, but in somewhere like Arena, that combo of Godier, Pain Rune, and Vanguard slash Assassin is really, really strong. It's also been pretty helpful in a lot of PvE environments. Cool. A lot of PvE environments. Oh no, has that been there the whole time? Oh no. <laughs> There's a little clip of my green screen there. That's a bummer. Hopefully that hasn't been too... Uh, Driving you too insane, but I don't know if I can redo a 40 minute video over that, so I'm going to just have to live with that one a little bit. That's a bummer though. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, the Pain Rune Godier combo is solid, very strong in Arena. It's gotten me through a lot of stuff in PvE as well. And then when the game loads back up, we'll jump over and take a look at the other programs. Oh, that's so annoying. That's so annoying, dude. Uh, what were we doing here? Here. Prism Amulet, because Prism Amulet is just incredible. I don't need to do a review of Prism Amulet, honestly. And then Flashpoint. Flashpoint, basically, if you get healed over the cap of your HP, it gets turned into a shield. And that, in conjunction with the Godier Pain Rune Assassin slash Vanguard thing, Assassin slash Vanguard thing, is, uh, again, just really, really strong. So it also reduces cooldowns for your healers and stuff. So it's Flashpoint's really, really good. It's another one of my favorites and it works really well with, with that setup. So that's it. That's a look at all my altar teams. I'm going to go look at this video and see if I can, I can live with the fact that that was there. If it wasn't a big problem, then this will be the video that goes up. I guess if it is a big problem, I'll redo it, but what are you going to do? You know, sometimes that happens. So uh, that's it. Hopefully this was helpful for you. I know it's a long video. Um, hopefully it, it helps you in some way get your ancient altar situation straightened out. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Get down here. Later.